Hey, 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 Hi guys, I'm Neil Katz, the uh, digital editor-in-chief uh, of the Weather Channel, and we'll spend 15 minutes. I want to walk you through how a 30-year-old television company transformed itself into a mobile video company. And to begin that story, I want to show you something that I guarantee will be the most unbelievable piece, mind-blowing piece of technology you're going to see all week. You're watching the Weather Channel. Ooh, look at all the clouds in the central plane. Lots of thunderstorms what's going on. Mm -hmm. We'll be taking a detailed look <coughs> via the satellite. In fact, this is the one of the pictures that we'll be tearing apart, along with the wide view oh. of everything. <laughs> yes. Okay, we've got that too. <laughs> right up after your local weather. Those guys were almost stoned up there. They were almost like giggling. It was really weird. I think they just like had no idea how to do television. Um, but they figured it out over 30 years. And the reason I, I, I bring this to your attention is, well, first of all, it's funny, but it actually was an unbelievable piece of technology 30 years ago. It seems simple now. It seems obvious. You can get weather data almost anywhere. Usually it's in your pocket. Uh, but 30 years ago, uh, delivering weather data to your television was really, really difficult. Uh, it was over the top three decades before over the top was a term. Uh, and in fact, today, no one's repeated this trick. So ESPN doesn't give you local sports, CNN doesn't give you local, weather, uh, local news, only the Weather Channel on television uh, can do it still today. So it's, uh, the reason it's interesting is because we've always been a technology company, not just a media company. And that has really served uh, to our advantage uh, as media has become more of a technology business. Um, Paul was asking me yesterday, he said, you're the Weather Channel, how on earth can you call yourself a mobile video company? Uh, and this is fundamentally the reason. Uh, uh, the audience has already moved to mobile for us. Uh, we have three times as many people on a mobile platform on a daily basis as are any of our other platforms. Uh, and to show you the scale of this, there's 22 million people a day. Uh, this is what the competition looks like in terms of publishers on mobile. Uh, we're bigger than ESPN, we're bigger than CNN, uh, by quite a bit uh, on a daily basis on mobile. So it's a massive, massive platform for us. Hopefully you guys uh, have us in your pockets, or at least some of you do. Uh, but it also became a massive opportunity for us. Uh, how do we do storytelling uh, for mobile world? It's a little bit different than it's going to be on television. Uh, so the first thing we did was what most companies do, and I've been at a couple of television companies now, and this is kind of always the first move. Uh, we essentially bought a bunch of VCRs, and we call them DVRs, and we put some guys in the basement, and we said, clip television, and put it on, uh, put it on the web, put it on mobile. And this, starts, this makes a lot of sense on the surface because you think, well, we're a television company. We make awesome video. It's kind of what we do for a living. And now the world's digital world is moving our way with video. It should be a no-brainer. Uh, and we've got tremendous talent. And um, hey, while we're at it, why don't we market that thing that actually still makes money, the, the TV side of the business. So it's completely rational. The only problem is it doesn't exactly work, or at least in our case, we, we felt it didn't work well enough. And there's a couple of core reasons for that. Uh, the first is that TV isn't really built uh, to respond to real-time data. I've heard so many people on this stage in the last day and a half talk about how they're using data to, t to influence programming decisions or at least promotional decisions. Um, TV isn't built to do that in a real-time basis, although I think eventually they will be as their business changes. Uh, also, so far, YouTube aside for, for creators in the news business, uh, uh, this has mostly been, digital has mostly been information business, not personality driven. Uh, you don't spend a lot of time chit-chatting between anchors on digital, that just doesn't work. It's great stuff, it's great theater on television, it's just not how it works on digital. Uh, they mostly fill time and we cut time. So, what do we do? Like anyone in show business, we got divorced. That's our first maneuver. Uh, and we started going, going it alone on the digital side and we really tried to build essentially a digital video startup, a mobile video startup inside uh, a television company. We did some things that you'd expect us to do. We built our own video studios. Uh, designed for vertical and horizontal. We've heard a lot of people talk about that. Actually, I don't know if you can see it, but we actually can rotate the TVs everywhere in the studio, so we're kind of ready to change the shot at any time. We have hundreds of, uh, of video feeds coming into us from storm chasers around the world that come into the studio, and they can very quickly turn it around and put in your mobile phone. And the thing that really matters to us is the manufacturing process. We've been able to figure out how to make a new video every 10 to 15 minutes uh, for just about every market uh, that has a storm in the country and often the world. 
uh, and that's a big, uh, a big differentiator for us. Uh, and coming, uh, coming this year, I'm not going to give you an actual date, but uh, we're going to start geo-targeting your phone experience. So when you pick up our mobile phone, depending on where you are, the weather news is going to be targeted to your location. Uh, and that requires a lot of real-time production um, that we really need to create a new digital process to do. Television sort of doesn't work that way linearly. Uh, we've also sent shooters into every storm now. Uh, these are digital shooters. Uh, this, these are not TV crews. Uh, and they operate a little bit differently. Uh, we sent shooters into every major storm event uh, across the world in 2015. Uh, most of the big ones, uh, big ones were actually in Asia. And we asked, our, we asked the, the crews to put down their ENG gear, to put down actually even their 5Ds, and actually pick up iPhones and Androids because we care more about speed than quality. The biggest issue for us as a breaking weather news company is we need it fast. And believe it or not, phones are the fastest way to deliver <clears throat> video today. Uh, and actually, in, actually, out of Asia, we're using WeChat and other standard platforms to get video back from our own stringers in the field. Uh, we brought an amazing new digital talent, uh, although some of them are familiar to you. Al Roker actually moved from the TV side of the house to the digital side of the house, uh, helped us launch a show, which I'll show you in a minute. And he brought on a lot of uh, new talent to become digitally native. UGC is a huge part of our business. We're lucky that weather is one of the a type of news event that really is experienced uh, by just about everybody. Uh, so there's often just tremendous B-roll and often great, you know, actually right in the middle of the event uh, from UGC. So to capture that, we built a real-time UGC desk. We're using technologies that allow us to search down to the meter and the minute uh, to, to figure out a lockdown exactly where a weather event is happening and who's creating social media around it. And by that, we mostly mean audio, um, video and photos. We're not that interested in uh, text tweets and that kind of stuff. Uh, that's been huge for us. Uh, we acquire everything. We don't take it. Uh, so we go through a process to verify and then actually legally acquire everyone's media. That's been huge for us. Uh, and we also partner with local TV um, in a new way. And uh, we have partnerships now in 70 local markets that give us access to some of the greatest uh, footage that happens around the country. And um, all that gets kind of put together uh, into how we do uh, mobile news. And here's a little sample of it. When 60 tornadoes struck the south, only one weather app took you into the center of the storm to keep you safe, to keep you informed. We have tornadoes on the ground right now. And to keep our promise. Oh my God. To cover every major storm in the world up close and personal. Oh my gosh, we've got softball size hail. We've made our biggest investment ever in mobile storm coverage. Watch out, John. With new studios. Canceled hundreds of flights over the weekend. New faces. I'm meteorologist Dominica Davis. And new technology that merges big data with big storytelling. Every day, we search millions of social videos to bring you the ones that matter. We're tracking a major winter storm. And the ones that don't. Talk about road rage. Did you see that? This rhino didn't take kindly to a group of tourists. We reinvented storytelling at a local level. We're just now getting in some new video of tornado damage from Pensacola. We've built the biggest mobile audience in publishing. And we're reinventing mornings. It's an epic snowball and boom! For millions of new fans. Holy shit! We do it every day, everywhere in the world, in the one place that matters, wherever you call home. So of course I show you all this great video of weather captured all around the world, and you all have the snowball that hits the kid. <laughs> That's how it works. Uh, we also did something interesting uh, starting in October of last year. Uh, we're beginning to day part the programming inside our phones. That's an experiment for us. Uh, we launched America's first mobile morning show. We call it The Lift. Uh, it gives you uh, uh, from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, every day on the home screen of the Weather Channel app. It's exclusive to mobile experiences. Uh, and it gives you the best breaking, you know, biggest breaking weather stories, cool science, beautiful nature, uh, and usually something to laugh, something to keep your day positive, like a giant snowball hitting a kid. Uh, and that's been really interesting. It's been, uh, we're pretty happy with the results so far. About almost 300,000 people a day uh, tuning in, watching about a million minutes a day inside the phones. Uh, that's actually been an 80% growth in uh, the UV, video UV, so the number of people who are watching video in that morning slot 
uh, <clears throat> has risen to a huge degree, excuse me. And of the people who've watched two or more videos, which is only two minutes exposure to our brand, uh, we have 90% brand recognition amongst those folks. So we're pretty happy with that side of it. Uh, perhaps the side we're more happy with, though, is the audience composition is starting to change. Uh, we're now 12% more likely to be female, a bit more likely to be younger. Uh, and this one I don't really totally understand, but we're 50% more likely if you're a woman to watch us in bed. I don't know why someone asked that question, actually, but <laughs> it was on the survey. And it, uh, I, it's important, I think, for sponsors, though. It knows that uh, we're the first message of the morning for millions of people. And that gives sponsor, uh, marketers an opportunity uh, to even step in front of where the morning shows are on television. We also launched a documentary unit. Uh, this may surprise some people. Weather Channel isn't really known for, uh, for doing documentaries. Uh, but we felt it was important to do investigative journalism as well as uh, do the daily breaking weather news uh, that we're known for. And we try to find the intersection of weather, the environment, and human and social issues in a way that you wouldn't expect Weather Channel to do. So traditionally, Weather Channel, uh, you expect us to cover weather that affects people who have homes, uh, fly in planes, uh, drive cars, and so forth. Uh, but we try to find more disaffected communities uh, to do these stories about. We did a Down Out in Anchorage is a piece about following uh, homeless teens uh, who try to survive the coldest winter in America. Uh, they have a tent city there in uh, Anchorage. Uh, and the Real Death Valley uh, is a piece that uh, won us a, a lot of awards last year, uh, an Emmy, a Polk, an IRE. Um, uh, actually, the company's first Emmy was digital, which really is, feels pretty cool. Uh, and I'm going to play you a clip from that. Real Death Valley is about uh, how migrants, hundreds of migrants uh, who try to enter this country are dying uh, every year in Texas, some of them buried in mass graves. Uh, and uh, heat and drought and homeland security not answering their 911 calls is at the core of the cause. Let's take a look. dream to go somewhere else. The amount of bodies that have been found here in this county is astronomical. These are mass graves. They happen to be born on the wrong side of an imaginary line that we drew in the sand. The immigrants are avoiding this checkpoint. There's between five and 600 to come through here every day. But if they're legal, they're illegal. The law has to be enforced. We don't want them here. As your congressman, I'll do anything short of shooting them. They found some Muslim prayer rugs on the border that lead me to believe those aren't little children coming over unaccompanied. County, one. It's not a hurricane, not a tornado, but it's due to the weather that these people die. We're going on a journey where people actually die because of the elements. Welcome to South Texas. So it's actually from last year, and it's unbelievable to us how, uh, how relevant it still is this year uh, with the election going on. So how's all that working? Um, what's all the result of, uh, of that effort? Um, here are the numbers. Uh, more time spent in our uh, than ever on our history of mobile platforms. Uh, about 42% of Android users are now engaging in content. It's about 38 million people a month for us. Uh, and the real key for the business is that if you're just a data user, if you use our, our, our apps just to check the weather, uh, you're good for about four minutes a month. If you come for content or you at least stay for content, uh, we have you for almost half an hour a month, 28 minutes. Uh, so that's been a big, a, a big driver of the business. Um, video gro growth's been great. About 40% were growing it uh, last year overall. 1.7 billion video views on platform. That's not Facebook. That's not YouTube. That's just on our uh, mobile and, uh, and web. Uh, and last year, um, get to the next slide. And last year, mobile, mobile surpassed. And this is the kind of chart you want, right? This is mobile growth, 300% uh, in the last two years. And last March, uh, mobile overtook web uh, as our dominant uh, video platform and uh, hasn't looked back. It's, uh, it's three or four, five X on a daily basis. OK, so talking about mobile video, uh, I just want two slides on this. I have to be remiss, uh, you know, remiss if I don't talk about Facebook, because mobile video essentially is Facebook video at this point. They are the monster. Uh, and. Um, most of, the, you know, most of the video growth in the industry, we're proud of everything we're doing on our platform, but you can't compete with 8 billion video views a day um, on, a, on your own platform. But the thing I want to point out to this crowd, at least, is that uh, the incumbents, like the Weather Channel, don't have much of a natural advantage. I don't know the mix of people here, if your startups are, or come from major publishers, but here are the top 10 video channels in February, according to Tubular Labs. And you'll notice that there's one established brand, the NBA. Uh, the other nine uh, are startups. Uh, or new, which is kind of interesting. Five of the 10 are food. So 
the scripts, you're, you're going to be in a good place here. All right, so last thing I want to end with is show you something cool that we're doing. Uh, this is obviously the year 360. Everyone's talking about it. It's going to be huge. There's monster investments from the big players, Facebook and Google. Uh, we are arming um, a small army of uh, weather chasers, of storm chasers uh, with 360 cameras. We're also doing shoots around the planet. Uh, we think it's going to be really interesting and big this year. So I want to show you a little bit. We'll see if it works. Like any demo, this is bound to fail. All right, we're still on the airplay. This is uh, some, these are not weather exactly, the shoots we did in uh, Iceland and Norway. Uh, this audio. And because of a bug, I can't get it to play horizontal. <laughs> you can't get the audio to work? All right, I assure you this is more interesting with the, uh, the powerful theme music. There's interviews. Anyway, it's not as cool without the music. Trust me, it looks really neat. All right, we'll, we'll stop it and, and take some questions. All right. Questions for Neil? Hey, Neil, I really enjoyed it, Hi. and congrats for the great success on mobile. Um, so how is the monetization part going on? You're selling on pre-rolls, you're selling on outstream on mobile. Is the demand really appreciating these audiences of mobile that you gained? Uh, yeah, demand's huge. Uh, there's more, frankly, the, the problem that almost every publisher has, and we're included, even though we have two, almost two billion video views, is more demand than there is supply. Uh, on the other hand, I will say that, um, uh, I think the guy from Bloomberg brought it up, I mean, pre-roll is sort of just hated by consumers, right? I mean, it's. We call it a necessary evil. I'm not sure it is. I mean, it, it's almost like if you were watching television and every time you change the channel, it always had a commercial to start the channel, uh, you would never turn on television. It's crazy talk. Uh, but somehow we built our businesses this way. So we've got to figure that one out. Right up here in the front, bring a microphone. Univision. So you're basing more of your, of your strategy on the, when you, when you say, is the app the best, uh, the best way that you are growing? Or the, when you refer to mobile, you refer to mobile web to people are still accessing you guys yeah. for that? Or, or how was your mix? Uh, we're very unusual. Most publishers are mostly mobile web. We are mostly app, at least domestically. Uh, about 75% of our mobile audiences are inside our apps, which is, uh, which is great. It's very lucky to have that. I think it's because we're not primarily a publisher. We're primarily a, a software utility. Uh, and the brand is so strong that people download our app. Um, the fastest growing part of the business is mobile web, and certainly globally, uh, we're mostly a mobile web business. Thank you. Right, right behind you, Tom. Warren. You've got a premium subscription offering as well, I saw on the app. How much of a focus is that for you? Uh, it's a bit of an experiment. Um, we, <clears throat> look, one of the biggest complaints, uh, and I read a lot of them, uh, is about ad load and uh, uh, Pre-rolls part of it, banners is another part of it. Uh, so we try to create a, an ad-free version. People kind of scream for it, they want the ad-free version. So far, the scale of the number of people who have actually plunked down the four or five bucks hasn't been as large as the scale of people who complain about having ads. Um, so we're, but, but on the other hand, we haven't heavily marketed it, we haven't made a huge push around acquisition on that. But, but it's an experiment, an early one, uh, we're not sure yet. Last question, I think we had right over there, Tyler. Hey, Neil. Hi. Uh, at the core, the Weather Channel is a news information and data provider, and you're really investing, obviously, heavy in these uh, experiential types of content. How are you working with your editorial team to like strike the right balance and invest in the right areas? Um, well, I'd say, look, breaking news drives the train. And that's probably true of any, any real news business uh, here. And so, <coughs> excuse me, when there's a, uh, we've built in a kind of interesting way. When there's, uh, when there's breaking weather news, when there's big stuff happening, hurricanes, tornadoes, and so forth, we actually take all of the editorial folks who aren't necessarily weather producers and they add to the weather producing mix. So they start doing UGC collection, they start calling sources, they become a news desk. They kind of all become weather producers so we can accordion up to handle big events. And we essentially now can handle, you know, uh, five, six simultaneously uh, uh, big weather events happening. 
uh, around the world. Uh, at the same point, we have a real kind of weakness in our business, which is when there isn't big weather, there isn't a ton to talk about. We're not as critical for people in the way that a CNN might have a new news every day. Sometimes it's politics, sometimes it's sports, something's always happening. So for us, we've had to move into science and nature, and we have this kind of editorial vision to be the home, official homepage of planet Earth uh, on days when the weather is not an interesting news story. And that's actually become about 50% of our uh, video viewership uh, is on the non-weather uh, material. Excellent. Well, thank you, Neil. Thank, thank you, you so you, much. Sir. And that, that quote, TV looks to fill time, digital cuts time. That's, That's it. Beauty. That's the footnote. Excellent. Right. Thank you again. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate thank you. It.